The Goat House is back, ranking the best rookies after one week, something we will update every single week. It'll be interesting to see who enters the rankings, who drops out, who is at one for most of the year. Last year, Bijan started at one, and we had a battle throughout the rest of the year with Shroud and Puka Nakua, but excited to reveal my top 10 heading into week two. Coming in at number 10, Chargers rookie receiver Lad McConkey, who, it was interesting, Harbaugh had to go up and, and get him in the second round, go up and trade for him, but what makes it so interesting is that maybe some people thought he was going up to get his own Michigan receiver, Roman Wilson, they take Lad McConkey, but in his first game against the Raiders, the highlight was the nasty touchdown. You see the quickness, the footwork, making people miss but I like how active he was you know he didn't have a ton of yards but he's always on the field it felt like he was getting open he's just getting his hands in the ball and that's kind of hardball and the Chargers game plan is just you know keep being efficient we don't need these big explosive plays if we get them that's great you know we saw Dobbins get some of those uh, but that's what he was. He was consistent and he was efficient but I what I really loved is his how active he was at any receiver position really he got an equal number of snaps in the slot and outside so I love that those receivers seem to be taking over the NFL the guys that aren't one trick ponies can do everything and that's what McConkey is uh, and, and we saw it in week one hoping for even more of a connection with Justin Herbert going forward and that will mean more even more production what we saw him again that touchdown was the highlight of, of his rookie outing it was a it was a nasty one number nine is going to be Texans rookie safety Kalen Bullock who recorded an interception in his first game and I'd say it was a pretty important one because it was a close game and the Colts were moving and he made a pretty athletic play uh, to kind of keep their lead and, and and help them you know have an advantage even more of an advantage at that point so I thought that actually was huge didn't allow a catch in his zone as well so that's fantastic perfect world you know he had a good of a game to be ranked a little bit higher maybe but perfect world more snaps and that's a big thing for me yes it's very impressive if you get production with limited snaps but the best of the best rookies are making an impact every play they're starting and they're on the field a ton so and he was on the field a bit but I would like for him to increase his play increase his snaps a little bit and that could be huge if he's trying to get that defensive rookie of the year but really good outing for Bullock Big time playmaker. We saw that in his college career. We saw it in week one against the Colts. He comes in at number nine. Number eight is the 49ers guard Dominic Pooney from Kansas, who I was a fan of heading into the draft. And I think a lot of you out there were, were a big fan of it. He seemed like a fan favorite, this guy, because how how much of a high motor offensive lineman he is. You can see him making different block, multiple blocks on different guys in one play. And then we're already seeing how good he is as a starting guard for the San Francisco 49ers. What really stood out, I mean, the Niners look like the best team in week one. We talked about that all throughout the week. But what really stood out is the run blocking was even better because people don't talk about enough is the 49ers offensive line. As good of a team they were as they were, their offensive line wasn't that great. And McCaffrey just didn't really have the holes that he used to in San Francisco. So, and, and week one, McCaffrey's out. Jordan Mason's in, who had a monster game. But a lot of credit to the offensive line, the run blocking was phenomenal it looked it's only one week but it looks improved big time and it's not because of one player but they do add Pooney up there who looked really good especially run blocking and it's, start putting it together like that's a major addition for them uh, so that to improve their offensive line so so far so good looks like they got a steal in the third round with their rookie guard from Kansas number seven is the Eagles corner Quinion Mitchell who they took in the first round from Toledo the analytics and you know PFF they're not going to agree with this one but I disagree with them I thought he played a great game yeah he gave up some catches in his zone I thought he played a very solid game though he saved a touchdown outplayed Christian Watson. It's pictured right there on that play. But I saw multiple good reps like that. The biggest thing that stands out to me is the physicality that he showed. That's what I love about this because that was kind of his question uh, you know, coming out of Toledo because for multiple reasons. I mean, he's built like he can be physical, but man, they did not have him press. That was an issue. He pressed like 24 times, give or take, in uh, you know his last year. And that's like, you know, is he not physical enough in coverage? He kind of is a guy that's, he, you know, why he's a first round pick because he sits and reads the quarterback so well in zone and he makes a play on the ball. And it's just not too many guys can do that at that level. But is he physical enough? at the same time and he showed that he showed that being just physical enough without interfering or getting flagged I love that from him I thought he had a really good game another big thing here I almost forgot is that if you watch that game on Brazil the field was awful right everyone's slipping who I thought had the worst of it and it makes sense was cornerbacks in that game cornerbacks I think the quarterbacks and receivers too but the CBs 
I mean, just think about getting out in, in, in and out of your back pedal, you know, in and out of your brakes, opening up your hips, turning and running. They were, they were struggling. I mean, look at a star corner. Jair Alexander was falling all over the place. He just could not keep up with anybody. Mitchell, I think for him to look as good as he did, given that feel, I think that's even more of a bonus. I was impressed with the, with the rookie first rounder from Philly. Number six is going to be the Chiefs receiver, Xavier Worthy from Texas. And yeah, obviously he put on a show pretty early on right away, actually on the first possession for the Chiefs in that opening NFL game on Thursday against the Ravens. And I mean, yeah, he was, was he perfect world get a little bit more involved besides those two plays but he, at the end of the day he scored two touchdowns he's electrifying type player i think it's more than the two touchdowns though i think it's more than whatever the production he is he is a factor when teams are going to be watching film and when teams are going to be lining up against him on the field they have to account for him they have to worry about him because he can you know get the end around get a handoff get you know something underneath or go you know just on a go ball because how fast he is, and he's a very good football player. He's a very good receiver. So it's more of the presence, even though he did score two touchdowns. Close to ranking him higher. I, I want him involved. I want to see multiple snaps, especially from these receivers. When you don't score, do you look good? Not that he didn't, but maybe a little bit more involved. And, and that would be, and he was involved. But if Hollywood Brown comes back, is he going to be as much involved? So we're just kind of going to wait and see and stuff like that. But uh, very much impressed, you know, and the speed is... Even though we know it's coming, it's you know when every time you see that it's 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 sight you know it's something. So here here is uh, the Chief Star rookie making the rankings in Week One after Week One. Coming in at number five is Tennessee Titans defensive tackle Tavondre Sweat. Who, if you look at the stats, you won't think he should make the list, but if you watch, he was an impact. He was a massive presence, a disruptor in the pocket, and caused the Bears, Caleb Williams, and the Bears to really struggle. Uh, I mean, not just in the pass game, in the running game as well, but this guy's a problem. I was, I felt like I was higher on him than anyone in the draft, so I get pretty pumped when those guys play pretty well. But, uh, yeah, he, he looked really good in his, in his first game, and I said in the pre-draft process, it's a guy you pretty much have to double-team. He swallows up blockers, and he creates for his teammates. Guys like Jeffrey Simmons is going to be perfect in Tennessee, but the Bears chose not, you know, to not double him that much. We saw their center because Sweat lines up at the nose. He's mainly a nose tackle, but that, that could line up at over the guard as well. But they had their, their center, Coleman Shelton, line up one-on-one -on -one with him a ton, and he just destroyed him. He, I mean, he, he destroyed Tevin Jenkins when, you know, lining up over the guard as well. Um, so, again, you wish there was more stats, but I'm not a huge stats guy, uh, even though it does matter when we're talking like Rookie of the Year, any any awards. But, man, he was he was blowing up not just the linemen, but the plays. And, and um He's pretty athletic for his size, too. I mean, he, he made Caleb Williams like have to really scoot, you know. So very impressive. He he is an impact. This is the nose tackle everyone's going to want. We're going to think that, you know, two, three years from now, everyone's like, that's the guy at, at, at that specific type of role. So really excited about Sweat. It's all about staying out of trouble off the field for him, but it looks good so far at this early stage. Coming in at number four, another Charger makes the list. Joe All, who was an elite prospect from Notre Dame, and we saw why right away. Had a really, really good outing, uh, and then even went against Max Crosby. I believe it was on 19 snaps, so not every snap, but when he went against, man, who I think is the best, you know, when you, if you combine uh, pass rush and stopping the run from a defensive end, just involvement in the game. I think Max Crosby, if you talk about it in that way, I think Max Crosby's the best. I thought Joel did a phenomenal job against him, and then even when he's blocking other guys as well. I thought there was one rep where Crosby beat him. He didn't. It didn't count as a pressure or sack like that. Maybe two, but it's Max Crosby, and the rest of them, he locked him down. I know he was 19. 19's a decent amount, especially given that the, the Chargers um, you know, ran the ball a bit. I mean, Herbert threw like 26 times, so... That was that, – that's fantastic, you know. Um, you know. There's an offense lineman ahead of him because he was a little more consistent, a little more efficient, but you could say that Joe Alt uh, played against the much better competition too, so that's why it's a little debatable. But, yeah, I, I mean, the Chargers going to have a, a, an elite offensive lineman. He's not elite right now. Maybe we'll be talking about it at some point. when. You know, wouldn't surprise me either way already in his rookie year. But I, in the future, it, it's almost going to be a surprise if Joe Alt isn't an elite offensive lineman and him and Slater, as long as they're healthy. I mean, that's that's a duo. Something you get really excited about here for the LA Chargers and some of the young players. They already got two that made this list, you know, after week one. Number three is going to be Taliese Fuaga, who is, I mean, damn near perfect, especially in terms of pass protection. And, and the Saints got off to a hot start. 
Carr being able to sit there and get the ball down for you, that's huge because if Carr is kept clean because he had really good offense line with the Raiders for the most part, when he's kept clean, he looks really good. Like he looked in the near, you know, past, he looked like a, close to a top 10 quarterback. But then as soon as he started getting pressured more and more, it's like he looks bad. So keeping him clean could make all the difference. And Fuaga did just that. You could see we thought he was kind of pro ready and especially because he fit the Oregon State blocking scheme is going to be the same exact as the Saints. So uh, last year to this year. So that's fantastic. Uh, and why he's kind of was pro ready, plug and play fit. And we saw that. And he was, again, in terms of pass protection, I mean, he was damn near, if not perfect. Uh, so, and he, he played, it's a good matchup week one. The Panthers really don't have, you know, many pass rushers, obviously. They're not the best team, but it's still an NFL defense that was solid at least last year. Uh, and he did a phenomenal job. So he makes the top three in the first rookie rankings of the season. Number two is going to be the Rams edge rusher, Jared Verse. And it was a battle for me. Well, the top two were clear cut. They were in my mind. They were going to be the top two. Verse comes in at number two, but someone to get really excited about here. He was great against the Detroit Lions offense line. Think about that. Probably the best offense line. Them and the Eagles argue some other teams. Uh, so if you're going to stand out in your first game, your rookie game, first rookie game against the Lions without Aaron Donald. He never got to play with Aaron Donald, who kind of created for everyone else. And he looked that good. That bull rush was his kind of key thing with Florida State. And some at Florida State. And yeah, sometimes the worry was, is that like really his only move? And uh, it looked like he had a little bit more than that. But either way, that bull rush looked really good. But he was always so good stopping a run. I thought he did a great job at that. Uh, but looking strong enough right away, week one, to play in the NFL – Got getting a sack, being productive, getting pressure. I think he has a top three pass rush win rate, depending on whose metrics you go off of. I've seen top three and top six, and based on what you watch, which is more important, that kind of matches that he played that well. Again, I keep saying it, going against the Lions. That, that, that's crazy, racking up some tackles. So I'm excited about him. Um, I wouldn't have guessed he had that good. And he was kind of pro-ready. You know what you're going to get. You wish you could develop a little bit more pass rush, you know, nifty pass rush moves, but uh, surpri a little surprising, even though he's a first-round pick for a reason, that he was that good against one of the top offensive linemen. It's a little surprising, not super surprising, but he comes in at number two, so he looks like a legit candidate for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Very impressive. And coming in at number one to start the year off is Brian Thomas Jr., the Jags wide receiver from LSU. Everyone realizes he had a good game, right? And he was pretty productive. I don't think the stats show how good of a game he had. So I think people, even though they're hyping him up a little bit, he actually still might be a little underrated from that first game performance because if you watch the tape, he was better than, much better actually, than what the stats show. And the stats show pretty good for a rookie in game one. But he did score a touchdown. He had 47 yards or so. He was very active. He had more snaps than Christian Kirk. I'm a fan. If I see rookies getting a bunch of snaps and being impact on, being on the field and being a... A, a guy you have to account for, you know, throughout the game. That's actually big for me. But, man, that touchdown was awesome. If you watch that touchdown, and, and, you know, in all 22, you can see Lawrence, how early he was zone coverage, and he throws it about the time Brian Thomas has three defenders. Like, he's in between three defenders, and, he, and it was a really good throw by Lawrence. He put it in the spot. He kind of threw him open. But Brian Thomas Jr. knew exactly where he had to be, when he had to be there. He saw the type of coverage it was. And then he made the play, and that's, you know, it, on the edge of the end zone, that's not the easiest play. So I, it just looked like a veteran. The way the, the release, the footwork, the route running, like classic LSU route running, getting by Jalen Ramsey, getting by guys downfield. He, look, he looked like a polished veteran receiver that fits today's era. So I, I was high on him. Everybody was. But I get even more excited about him. Like, I think he's polished, ready to go. It's the matter of Trevor Lawrence. Because he can make those contested catches, too. So it's the matter of Trevor Lawrence, you know, doing it more. I think because of that touchdown, because of the trust that Lawrence had in him, and then he says, okay, I, I can trust this guy going forward, I think there's going to be even more action. I'd watch out for him. As good as this re receiver rookie class is, and he was part of it, you know, he was right after the big three. You know, some people said there was a big three, and then there was a big you know, one or two after that, or maybe it was a big four and he was part of that. Yeah. But as good as this group was, he looked the best. I mean, neighbors was pretty productive. He wasn't far, you know, far from making this list. Thomas Jr. Looked better. Marvin Harrison was a little underwhelming. You know, Dunze, we didn't see much from the bears offense, uh, but Brian Thomas Jr. Was the best of that group. And um, some people thought he'd be a little raw too, because he was mainly a boundary guy and mainly downfield or red zone contested catches. But 
you know, even though he didn't have a, a, I mean, he had enough catches, but even though he, had, he didn't have a ton, I saw enough on the off plays, the plays he didn't get the ball, n- that I know that he's pretty polished, he's pretty far along, and that he can do anything, you know, he can get open anywhere on the field. So, uh, I, again, the stats good, the impact good, uh, uh, the snaps, you know, right there with Gabe Davis, more than, you know, Christian Kirk, more action than Evan Engram, uh, but how involved, how much of an impact, I mean, all of the, all there was to see about his game for all those reasons, again, thought he's better than the stats, and that's why he is uh, is number one. But if we want to take a look at uh, the, going back and look at the full list here, we just saw number one, Brian Thomas Jr., number two, Jared Verse, Taliese Fuaga at number three, Joe Alt, four, Devondre Sweat, five, Xavier Worthy, six, number seven, Quinion Mitchell, number eight, Dominic Pooney, number nine, Kalen Bullock, and ten, Ladd McConkey. Chargers get two guys on here. Uh, this is going to change throughout the year, and we see some just missed guys at the bottom. Brock Bowers is pretty productive. That tight end duo should be fun, physical. Uh, Frazier of the Steelers, their center, looked really solid as well. Dallas Turner recorded a sack for the Vikings. I wish he was getting a little bit more snaps uh, for the guy that he could be. Uh, Cooper Beebe of the Cowboys starting and looking good. Marshawn Nealon was a sneaky one. He As a rotation guy, he was... Uh, showing his physicality and getting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, and then Bucky Irving was a factor. Actually ran better than Rashad White. So I thought that was uh, that was awesome. But uh, a lot of guys look really good. This is going to change throughout the year, and we'll see who climbs, who falls, who ends up being number one. But check out our Week 2 videos. They're already up. Score predictions up. Picks, picks up. Locks. Power rankings. All kinds of content for you guys to check out. Make sure to turn notifications on so you don't miss anything. And we'll be back next week updating these rookie rankings. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.